This is Leisha Holmes and I'm your host on the Recruiters Recruitment Podcast and I must apologise in advance if there's some serious familiarity going on because I've actually known our next guest forever. Uh, in fact, we were talking about it on LinkedIn most recently when they celebrated their 16 year anniversary. This is Steve Thompson, who is the founder of Forward Roll and Greenify and somebody who I consider to be part of my inner circle because we've known each other for so long. Welcome to you today, Steve. How are you? Thanks, Leisha. Shall I share that you turned up in a ex-police um, Volvo and I just thought, this lady has got <laughs> balls. I like her. <laughs> I, do, I can't believe you actually remembered that because I'd forgotten about that. But at the time, my now ex-husband had this thing that you, because you got a very good car for a very cheap price because it obviously had very high miles. It was an ex-police inspector's car, which is kind of ironic, the carry, because I'm now obviously going out with a sergeant. So, uh, yes, it was very well remembered. We went to, I think I picked you up, you were working in the people pod, and we went to Frankie and Benny's, I believe. Was it? Yeah, that sounds about right. (laughs) Classy, very classy. That's why I've invited him on. So there might be some people who do not yet know what you do. So give us an overview as to who you are and what your business is doing. So I founded Ford Roll. Um, It was our 15th birthday, I think, um, on Tuesday. Um, it was lovely to put a post out and say thank you to everyone and get loads of really lovely messages. Um, and um, in lockdown, I also started a uh, sustainability business, eco tech business called Greenify, and we have a product which um, which we're selling into recruitment businesses at the moment, which is um, super cool. I'll tell you about later. Yeah, I was going to say we are going to come on to that. That's wonderful, and you know you have definitely been formidable in your journey but I wanted to put some context because I think this is really relevant to our listeners so just to explain to you uh, we have a global audience which is wonderful and the feedback we get is that we do have a lot of you know leaders like yourself our peer group but also a lot of newbies starting out so a lot of new recruiters who've come in sort of post-covid who are part of the generation where it's all around marketing but actually you started life as a marketeer and I think that the life of a recruiter has evolved so how where do you see us in the ecosystem as a recruiter now in terms of skills, marketing capability, and where do you think we're on the trajectory to? That's a good question. So, um, I mean, I yeah, as you rightly said, I started my career at the Corporate Bank um, and, and Very, who are two big employers in the Northwest. And I always felt like my marketing skills gave me a bit of a head start on other recruiters. Not, not only because I recruited in marketing and I had an I guess, a knowledge of what good looked like. Um, but also because I think it's important um, for a recruiter to be able to present themselves um, to multiple customers um, and understand customers. And that's what marketing is all about. So I think I think in the modern world, um, with automation and, um, you know, and, and social these days, the, you know, the average recruiter needs to be um, to have a bit of marketing in them, you know, they need to be a good marketeer. Mm. And I think as you, as as the industry progresses with things like AI um, and bots, etc., I think what you'll see is the the lower end of the market, the blue collar stuff, the volume stuff. I think actually those types of businesses will be really marketing driven, really automation driven, and the people within them, the consultants within them, will be probably ninety degree, hundred eighty degree. The degree um, delivery types mm. but I think there's there's always going to be a place at the top end the more niche stuff the more white collar stuff the more specialist stuff for good specialist recruiters salespeople who can build relationships can mm. build a community like you've done mm. um, and like we have with some of our mm. um, candidate groups and um, you know and, and can really go out there and sell and develop long-term relationships so I think there's going to be a place for for everyone going for everyone. forward. I think I think we're at a really interesting time in our evolution, actually. And I think it's really good to sort of hear your experience having come from your industry. And I've always felt that that gives people real credence, especially when they're starting out. You see excellent legal recruiters who came from the legal firm, excellent teachers who become excellent recruiters, actually, generally. But I think it's, you know, where we are now, that we are more, we are so much more than just telesales, for example. When I started out in the 90s, that's all anyone cared about. Can you sell? But actually now, I think it, you're right. It's about creating communities that where you have value. Otherwise, you will be replaced by, as you say, the sort of AI that effectively can, you know, 
streamline what what you can actually do we're not influencing otherwise I don't know if you get it but I just get so many bots trying to connect with me these days it's it's almost painful so I think we're actually going to come to a point where people rail against all this like you know just noise that you get on social that you get in your email inbox that you get in your LinkedIn inbox that you get through social and go I just want to talk to people you know I just totally someone sell to me someone ring me up and have a conversation and tell me what solution they can honestly um and um yeah, I, I, no, I can't ever see a place where good salespeople in recruitment don't make a lot of money and are really successful. No, I think you're absolutely right. It's interesting that you say that. I'm laughing because I must get at least two a week from um, a rec to rec bot. And they'll say, you know, they're, they're trying to pitch me as a rec to rec bot. I run my own business. And I always reply back with something really sweet. Like, thank you so much for this lovely email. I'm very interested to know more information. Obviously, I never get a reply back. Uh, and I do think you're absolutely right. When, when I think about candidates that I will go hell for leather with like really go on a crusade on they're probably ones that have picked up the phone to me and I mean pick up the phone you know where it's it's those human skills that I think that's where traditional meeting the modern world has to be combined together to you know build relationships and that's really what marketing is isn't it you know you are building a community you're building a need within that community um and it isn't just about bashing out calls it's doing something meaningful for your relationships yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it, it's a great marketing. Marketing is really important in recruitment mm. from a uh, from a door opening perspective. You know, yeah. people want to buy into your yeah. brand. You know, I think brands are a lot more authentic these days. You know, and also there's the personal brand of the of the consultants that's really important as well. Mm. Um, and but you know, going back to that post that I did on our birthday this year, I think you know, there's hundreds of replies. It was really heartwarming. Um, and pe- pe- people congratulated us. And I look back and think, I've met all of these people. Mm. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've had multiple conversations over probably a period of 20 years with, with them. Mm. And you can't buy that, can you? You know, no. you can't. You, you, that's a transactional AI kind of t- type um process is never going to be able to no. to beat that no. and, um, and I you know I see that as my superpower and as other good recruiters superpower has been able to sit down in front of someone and go you've got it yeah You're you know and you you it, it's amazing looking back at some of the people that you met as juniors you know marketing executives and, mm. and going you're gonna go far all the and, way and you know and they do you know um, yes yeah. To, to kind of help them on that journey that's one of the most kind of um, satisfying parts of the job oh I, do, I totally agree Pe- peer-to-peer and that if there any recruiter listening who's at the start of their journey I would absolutely advocate a peer-to-peer style approach that as you grow in your role your candidate pool will then grow with you and they then become your future clients and there's nothing more rewarding than placing a candidate with someone that was your candidate originally it's just the best feeling ever isn't it no I, I do it I agree with you totally and I think you know, we're, we're ever evolving, but ultimately the recruitment process is humans dealing with humans and changing lives. And we can utilize the technology. We can utilize marketing strategy. You, you as a business have absolutely, I think, nailed how company value proposition can be transgressed into, sorry, transcended into each person's personal brand. Because if I think about some of your you know, like top performing consultants, you know, everybody has their own message, their own unique voice, but it's all correlated to what forward roles about i think you do it really well yeah and and you know we don't that's not kind of designed you know i guess the only design behind that is is just hiring people who are like-minded yeah oh you got the same values and then we let them be themselves on on social you know so there is there is a strategy he isn't he's joking because of course there's a strategy that you hire the right people who add something to your values and and you know like you say have a similar mindset and you do i think you do do it with a plum now you are for anyone that's not watching that's listening um steve is sporting a very beautiful greenify merch jumper um, <laughs> absolutely do you know what i actually really toyed with the idea because we've got we've got merch key recruitment and the recruiters group recruitment podcast merch but actually i just felt like putting a dress on because i never i i'm just living leisure wear these days so i just thought no i'm going to put a nice dress and not that you can see it because it's obviously just my top half but tell us about greenify you, you mentioned it in the intro but just go in a bit more detail as to you know what you think you, if you we're listening to our captive audience our leaders what they can do to 
propel themselves? So Greedify came about, I mentioned that I used to work for Corp, um, Corp Bank earlier, in the days when, you know, they had a fantastic ethical brand. You know, they were one of the first businesses to talk about um, sustainability and the environment and that we had to look after it. Um, so it was an amazing first place to to work in marketing. And um, during my time there, I met a guy called Neil Owens, who was always someone I thought was the smartest person in the room. Just a really nice guy. We kept in touch. I went to his wedding and stuff like that. And in lockdown, he came to me with an idea, which was for a business um, that helped consumers and helped business owners um, navigate what is a really complex kind of minefield, which is how do you be more sustainable you know how do you help balance some of the footprints that you leave um on the planet and um so greenify was his idea i i jumped on board because i loved it and it's it's always been a passion of mine since those co-op days and um selfishly i had um i wanted one of our first products to be uh, for the recruitment industry because i could see that there's a real opportunity in our space i think um most recruitment businesses are, um, you know, the vast majority are at the bottom end in terms of size and so mm-hmm. SMEs, people who probably care about the environment. You know, it's front page news because mm-hmm. it's it's you know rightly something that um, everyone um, is affected by and everyone cares about, um, but no one really has much of an idea about how you how do I go about being more. Mm-hmm. Um, how do I be about, go about being carbon neutral or net zero? It's actually really complicated. You know, you start looking into what these things mean. You can spend a lot of money, you know, mm-hmm. on carbon consultants or carbon accountants to come in and count light bulbs and how many computers you've got mm-hmm. and still not really have done anything about it. So what we wanted to do is develop a product that enabled recruitment businesses um, to have an instant green credential. So it's £99 a month, and that offsets the average size SME um, business in the UK to um, it offsets their operational footprint. So they're heating, they're lighting, they're commuting, and, and stuff like that. But the amazing kind of business development superpower that it gives them is it allows them to greenify hires for clients. So... I speak to a lot of FTSE businesses um, and, you know, ESG is absolutely right at the Mm. top of their objectives. Um, It's boardroom level kind of priority, ESG, sustainability. Since COP, they're all talking about how they can implement that into one of their core strategies. Um, And those HR directors and people directors sat there not able to bring much to the table. Mm. Um, I mean, we won, a, we won a, a big contract last year with JD Sports, yeah. um, which was because we were able to give them a great value add, which was a green talent solution, whereby every single person we place with them, we offset their environmental footprint for the first 12 months with the business. Um, it got some really nice PR in the recruiter, actually. Um, so the three things that it offsets, if you can imagine your footprint on an annual basis, You've got a carbon footprint, you've got a plastic waste footprint, and you've got a deforestation footprint. Mm. Every single action that you that you do, whether it's eating a bowl of lentils or it's sending an email, yeah. creates a little cloud of carbon somewhere. Mm. Um, you know, think about all the plastic waste, all the um all, all the all, all the kind of deforestation in, mm. in, um, impacts that you have from global farm industries and stuff like that. We all have them. And so this product are just in the back end, we go out and buy really cool environmental projects, you know, tree planting projects, carbon offset projects, wind farms, hydro plants, um, tree conservation. And we've, we're plugged into two partners who remove um, plastic from the ocean. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So we kind of built these products in the back end that we sell onto recruiters mm-hmm. um, to allow them to offset you know the the hires that they make for their clients, mm. and it's got done really well. I mean, it's, we've to be fair, we've only kind of soft launched it over the last twelve mm. months. Um, we're trying to build a tech platform that that goes behind it that makes it um easier 
um, to use and, and, and more intuitive. And we've got a brilliant FTSE CIO um, who's come on board um, to, to help us do that. Wow, that's so amazing. Where the business is going to go. But if anyone is listening who wants to chat about a really simple solution to give them a, an instant mm. um, green credential for their business, um, then they're welcome to to get in touch and I can chat to them about it and I can oh, show them. Without a shadow of a doubt, absolutely. And if you if you are listening to this at any point, you know, obviously we try and make these episodes evergreen. Make sure you mention the Recruiters Recruitment Podcast so Steve can make a note that's where you came from. We want to educate ourselves. We want to ensure that when we look back on our legacy, it isn't just about the people that we've placed, but actually we're doing something for our, you know, unified human factor which is the planet you know we only have one time on this planet we only have one planet so no, i think that's brilliant and it's quite unique i don't is there anybody else doing it i mean are you are you in quite a unique space do you think it, it's a world first in the recruitment space that's amazing yeah. that's amazing yeah. good for, good for you and we and we're you know i'm so proud to be a partner to you and you know know that that's something that you're pioneering because we can do a hell of a lot more than just you know place people can't we so that's wonderful i love it thanks steve and you know the planet will thank you as well i'm sure your children will too so final question for you is that your headline on your linkedin i think it was is talent for growth is that your business that's your business headline it's kind of our business um, brand I like it. Line, if you like. Yeah, yeah talent for growth so what do you think in your vast experience what are the key tips for successfully spotting that talent for growth because I think that's where I think it's quite a is it a scientific thing do you think talk me through where you think what you think the top tips are for spotting it in the future yeah so the, I think there's a few things there the first thing that I that, that I always um advise my clients is you could have an always on approach to to hiring you can't just turn it on and off like a tap if you're um you know even if you're a a recruitment business owner listening to this, um, you should always be meeting people. Um, if a rector X sends you a good senior person and you're not ready for them, just meet them. You know, if a rector X sends you a good person in a different slack, you know, vertical, um, and they look interesting and it, you know, it might be mm. something for the future, meet them now, you know, and you, 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 it's an amazing learning opportunity to sit down with people. Um, and, and particularly my clients who are, you know, high growth, you know, tech type businesses um i think it's a really great way for them to be able to get free advice um to be able to think to to, to pull a network of, of of great people who they might want to tap into in the future either mm. as mentors or you know to come and work with them mm. um and i think it's a great way even to just start to develop concepts around what the future um organization design might look like or future state might look like for for that particular business in terms of mm. technology stack or whatever you can learn so much by meeting good people so i think that's the you know that's the the, the first tip is i always be switched on to to recruitment even if you don't need it right now um the second part i think is um you've got to have a really compelling story mm. you know um whatever stage you're at in your journey, I mean, I guess they call it EVP these days, don't they? Um, but um, it's amazing still how many crap briefs you get, how many shitty job specs you get that's been pulled off Indeed and pasted into, yeah. into a document. Now, how can you expect someone to want to come and join you if mm. you can't even be bothered? No. Nope. something's really compelling together. But we, we do a lot of work with our clients on... Um, developing candidate packs, you know, that really sell the business visually as well as, um, uh, you know, verbally and um, and really tease out of them the cool stories about why you'd come and work for that business, why you as an individual would want to work there in the first place, what kind of development opportunities you're going to get, who are the cool leaders in that business that you're going to learn from. I think um, too many people see um, recruitment as like a HR process mm. when it should be. Every time you've got a new role, it should be, right, this is a new marketing project. Like, what are the pieces of the jigsaw that we need to yes. to, find, to put together to make this really compelling and find the best possible person? Mm. And I think the final thing um, I would say, and, and, I, and it's my big piece of advice to clients, is around um, try not to be too prescriptive. Mm. You know, there are certain jobs out there where you absolutely have to have the exact skill set. Otherwise... 
Yeah. Work. But you know, most of our, you know, like your markets, most of our markets are candidate poor, mm. and there's not enough mm. talent. On, uh, there's not enough people with certain skill sets to go yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. So you've got to be prepared to look at other things. And I think mm-hmm. if you hire more on soft skills um, and, and put focus on things like emotional intelligence, um, growth mindset, um, and drive, yep. and continual learning, and good stuff like that, mm. then I think... If you hire a good person who's smart and wants to learn, yeah, um, and you give them the environment to do it, you, you're just on to a winner. Of course you I mean, are. My my um my seven year old came back from school two weeks ago and started talking about growth mindset. You know, oh um, wow, that's ace. I, I coach his football team, and a couple of the lads turned up and started talking about it. And I was like, wow, seven year olds talking about growth mindset. It blew my mind because. I mean, that's a fairly recent, I think, you know, um, like terminology, isn't it? A fairly recent concept. And um, I almost wish I knew it at that age. I know. God, that's, I'm so, I've got an old goosebump because I'm so pleased to hear that. I wonder if the teachers are listening to the High Performance Podcast because Jake Humphrey is always pushing out to the teachers. So I, I'm absolutely thrilled to hear that's the case because I think that's more important than possibly learning about physics and stuff like that is growth yeah. mindset. So yeah. I think there's a few things I just want to pick up on. First of all, um, maybe learning to say yes instead of no is a really great way to grow your business. You know, like you say, being, re- and actually the worst case is that you're going to benchmark your current people by just taking on board what's going on externally. Um, and I absolutely advocate curiosity, both you, if you're listening as a leader, be curious about who's coming through on the market, who is available, why are they available? And if you're listening and you're thinking of going out into the market, you know, be curious and l- l- be prepared to learn. No one knows everything. And it, every day is always a school day. If today hasn't taught us anything, you know, you're listening to this podcast because you want to learn something, presumably. So I think that everything you've said there, you know, cultural intelligence is another big one. We recently had a guest on who, you know, he his whole business is around cultural difference and about that, you know, culture ad and what are you going to add? But actually, what are you going to bring to that individual that's looking for the job? It's it, that that storytelling mm. works both ways. And I think we need to be, and that's why if I, this actually lead, leads very nicely back to the first question about marketing, because marketing is around how you tell your story. And if you haven't got that right, no one will come and work for you and no one will hire you. Yeah, it's massive, isn't it? It's massive and it's um, yeah. probably... Uh, a big change from when we started our careers, you know, when yes. I don't even know I ended up in recruitment. In fact, you know, I went into to an interview for a, a marketing job with a recruiter and they asked me, had they ever fancied it? You know, so it is good to see, you know, that there's there's podcasts like yours um, and, you know, I like Hisham's um, podcast yeah. as well. You know, it, it's, I wish I had that resource as a junior consultant. When, Definitely. Um, you know, where I could, could could learn from 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 people who've been in the industry for longer than Def- I had, and, and see Definitely. different perspectives and hear about different industries and sectors. Definitely. I think I'd have been a much better recruiter a lot faster. It, it would have been a different world. I totally agree with you. We wouldn't have had to sit and wait for our training session. And just a big hello to Hisham who came on our podcast. He was absolutely remarkable. And you absolutely need to go and listen to his recruitment mentors podcast. It's brilliant. He has high performers on there. It's dead down to earth. So yeah, massive shout out. Well, as always, I knew you'd be wonderful. You know, your energy has always been totally contagious and I'm sure there'll be plenty of people clicking through on Greenify and Forward Roll, hopefully after listening to you. So thank you so much for joining us on the Recruiters Recruitment Podcast. Thank you, my pleasure. And thank you, for by, by the way, for all the help that you've given us over the years with um, finding great candidates. Um, we've, we've got some amazing people in our business who, you know, over a period of, um, you know, 15 years that we almost that we've been in business, I think probably 13 years ago, maybe, was it that I met you? Yeah, it was. Um, You've, you've given us some some absolute crackers and Aww. so thank That's you so kind. you're so kind That's so lovely because people might not know but my day job is i'm a rec to x there you go thank you so much steve send my best to everyone pleasure bye-bye thanks